So hi, I'm Bob Watson, I'm Professor of Technical Communication, thank you for that. Um, and I wanted, I, this, this conference has been an amazing experience for me as a as I would imagine for you as well. Uh, any writing conference that talks about API usability rises quickly to the top of the list. That's one of the things I studied in my master's program, so it's like, right here. Uh, but the, 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 the common theme that I, I've heard in all of this, some more specifically than others, but it all comes together, is that we're here to help create successful customer journeys uh, in wherever those journeys uh, they go. And we, we, we know from writing documentation and talking to users that each customer's journey is a little bit different, but yet they, they share enough commonality to where we can write one set of documentation to cover that. Uh, recently, I'm in the process of finishing up my own customer journey, and so I wanted to use that as somewhat of a backdrop uh, for this. Now, <coughs> so, uh, as a software developer, I've written APIs. As a technical writer, I've documented them. Um, and, then, uh, and so I've seen them from inside and out. Uh, but I thought the customer, seeing it from the customer's journey would be a good place to end the conference because, uh, after all, again, that's why we're all here. So my customer journey uh, started at my university in Macon, Georgia, and it's taken me to Honduras. Uh, I'm developing a uh, low-cost patient information system to use in clinics that don't have much of anything uh, except lots of patients. And so uh, it's been an incredible journey. I've had the opportunity to use a lot of documentation as a customer, a very patient customer at times. Um, so I can, I, I, I can sympathize with my customers and, and when I'm on the other side. Um, I think that's a valuable position to be in. I, I'm sure some of the evangelists find themselves in that position frequently. Um, but it's important for technical communicators to see documentation from both sides, one is to the customer. And so this is, that position has put the customer's perspective into a sharp focus, bringing together a lot of the research that I've done um, to see, you know, how does that translate to the customer. So in the course of my journey, we've been developing software, usability testing it, and seeing how it all comes together. And so next month, actually, We'll be heading off to Honduras to uh, replace some of those forms with uh, a computer terminal that will hopefully work in their environment. But that's my journey, and every, every customer journey is different. And again, we're here to help make it successful. But I think one thing we can all agree on is that the API docs that we write are there to help customers navigate that journey. That's why we're here. And so I want to talk a little bit about that and kind of what that journey looks like through the documentation. And so I want to talk about some funnels and pyramids. Um, not these funnels, not that pyramid, but that's kind of cool. Um, but let's start with the conversion uh, funnel. This is, a, this is a popular one, we've seen a lot of that. Uh, its goal is to, through awareness, developing interest, creating desire, to cause some sort of action. The compelling thing about this funnel is that it results in action, and an action that's obvious and measurable. And that's great. Unfortunately, that's not what the rest of the documentation does. Uh, the rest of the documentation starts to get a little more interesting, I like to call it. Uh, starting with the landing page, where you have a very focused concentration of content, it starts to diffuse through a very, you know, hello world, maybe a couple of Hello World like examples, into a handful of tutorials, and then into this vast sea of reference content. And so once they come into the landing page and the portal and they start to get to know your, uh, your API, where does success end up? It's unlike the incoming funnel or boom, they clicked subscribe or sign up or whatever. That's the, the metric of success for that process. But after that, where does, where does it go? 
And that's where the, the, the variation, the various customer journeys start to become harder to follow. But they're important, you know, again, as they diverge through uh, the, uh, the, the incoming funnel, and they go into the, I, I call it initially the inverted funnel, because kind of keep the funnel thing going there, but um, I think I like the pyramid one better because where we're going is the foundation of the document set. So funnel success comes in, easy to track. Customer success occurs in all kinds of different places. And so the where I'm going to spend the rest of the talk is talking about the reference content. Again, something that's near and dear to my heart. Not only as a researcher who's studied it and a developer who's, I don't know, inspired it to be written by other technical writers, um, but as someone who, you know, literally in my, my customer journey, I can say, I didn't count this unfortunately because I had other things to do, but I'm going to guess 95% of my documentation references were reference content. Um, I already had been um, attractive and uh, came through the funnel some time ago, and so now I had something to do. I, I needed to get my work done, I needed reference topics to help me through that. And so in this last couple of years, I think it's safe to say a good 95% of my documentation accesses were for reference content. I need to look something up to get things done. So let's talk about value. Uh, and I want again, I want to keep the talk from the customer's perspective because that's uh, the most recent to me anyway. Um, and how customers might be telling you what they value and how they value it. It's not always measured in dollars. It's only not measured in this currency that I've got a picture of. That's all Central American currency uh, from my last trip. But, um, but they're telling you what they value. And so we're talking about reference topics or, like I said, the unsung heroes of API documentation. Uh, I don't think they get enough respect, so I'm here to help, help that out. And so I, I, mean, I adapted this pyramid to sort of reflect on how they're, how they're valued, how the various types of topics are valued in terms of how much time is spent on them. And so, you know, at the top, the landing page, you know, the, probably the most prominent one on your site, uh, is really not very valuable. It's like, okay, yeah, next. Uh, and once you've read the, the uh, compelling value proposition, you move on, and you, you, you know, really go back to that, unless you have to like, you know, go through that to get to the next thing. Uh, you go to the Hello World page, you go through the, the demo, but once you've done that, on the next thing, you know, you know, who goes back and oh, let's do the Hello World problem again. Like, that was so much fun. Um, I do. And so then you go to the tutorials and learn how to adapt this to your problem. But once you kind of have a handle on how things work, you're into the reference topics, you know, to the extent you're back into the documentation at all, because that's where you're going to fill in the blanks. Now, a lot of tutorials, and we've, we've heard some talks about this, you know, make it easy to copy and paste or you have the examples. So, um, you know, it's not exclusively the reference content. And thinking back on my project, I probably copied and pasted a couple of things too. Um, but, uh, like I said, after, once you kind of get a handle on know what it does, how it can do it, then it's down to kind of get to work and actually do it. So, some of the, so this, these are some examples of some of the research I've done in reference topics. Uh, and most recently, a, a study came out uh, that showed for in the documentation, reference topics were spent where the uh, developers in their study spent the most time. Uh, interestingly, I think one of them said uh, half of development is Googling. Well, there's some, uh, there's some evidence to support that claim. Uh, in this case, 49%. But uh, the, in this study, they, they studied developers you know, doing development tasks in coding. And so about half the time they spent coding, and half the time they spent looking stuff up. <coughs> and of the things they looked up, they broke down the different types of documentation. You can see how the uh, welcome page is down there at the pointy end of the time. 
on up to the reference topics and the recipes or the how-to topics. So, uh, not just me, apparently other people spend some time with reference topics. And so, you know, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, that even though you know, it's maybe not the most glamorous part of the site, it seems to be one of the, the more popular. They spend a lot of time there. Another thing I learned, uh, this is from a study about 10 years ago, is that reference topics make your customers smarter. I thought, hmm, how does that work? Well, the, it's a similar study where they study um, developers coding and accessing documentation and in some of their interviews, they talked talk to the developers afterwards. Um, and one of the developers they studied said that he never bothered to learn the API because he knew it would always be there in the documentation. So he didn't have to remember it. And so the researchers concluded from that, you know, that study, or one of their observations was, they thought that by having you know, accurate, comprehensive the reference topics, uh, developers could essentially distribute that part of their knowledge amongst the help topics. So they don't have to remember it. And that was uh, my case in a bunch of them, because especially doing multiple languages where uh, they, you know, there's one function to do the same function, there's a function with a different name in each language. It's like um, creativity. So, uh, so I would be going back and forth looking for reference topics of these, you know, the input for the output, yeah, for the input, which function is it. But I never remembered any of that because I knew it would be there, and I could just go back and look it up. So as long as I had access to that information, I had other things to think about. So, in in that case, the reference topics kind of help fill the gaps in my customer in my my journey as a customer from you know, project conception to delivery. Um, you know, I come up, there'd be a gap in my knowledge or information I look up, but just keep on the way. So the, the thing that I, and I think I've heard this in some of the talks, is that to, the, the, the more you can reduce the friction in that process, you know, the, the, the smoother the path you're paving for your customers to get to their destination. And again, I, 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 I'm glad I can, can you know, round up the, the talks by bringing it back to the customer. Because the reference topics, they fill the gaps in the customer journey, and they help help them get across the finish line to their destination. Now, one of the things to remember in you know, the, these studies and others is that your customers might be different. These were small studies. They studied just a, a handful, I would think, like a, a 10 or 20 developers. Um, so your customers are probably different. And that's good. The advantage of these small studies, or the disadvantages, is they may or may not apply to you. You have to judge that you know your customers better than anybody. Uh, the good news is these, these types of studies aren't that hard to conduct. So it's, it's easy to get that information for yourself. Well, easy maybe it's not fair. It's, it's, it's not complicated. Um, I've been technical writing and for however uncomplicated these studies are, I remember them being easy to get together to get everyone like, okay, let's stop documenting and study the users. Like, no, 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 get your structure. So they're not that hard to replicate. But the, the, the important thing that's kind of, that's been a common thread in all the research I've studied, uh, done on reference topics, is they they show how much you care as writers and as companies and providers, how much you care about their success. You're not paving the first half of the road then leaving a dirt road for them to follow to get to their destination. The more you can pave that road all the way to where they're going, wherever that is, the more, as a customer, it's like, hey, they were thinking of me. Okay, maybe not me, but they were thinking of my challenge. And they, they, by paving this path of documentation, I was able to get to my destination without having to, without having to lock in the house and put it in four-wheel drive. Um, and if you've ever done development, you know what I'm talking about. Like when you say, okay, here I am developing my code, I go away, look it up, and go in, and all of a sudden, <laughs> breaks. Now I gotta like reverse engineer somebody's API because the documentation isn't complete. So it's like, all right, back it up, get up a winch, pull yourself through the mud. And you know, hopefully find some traction on the other side where you can get back uh, on the road. 
But that process, you know, who's familiar with flow and the notion of getting into flow, that's kind of a developer thing. When you hit that, you know, with frictionless API documentation, you can stay in that state of flow. You can just look it up, do back, and do what to work. When you have to, when the documentation lets you down as a customer, now like I said, you have to like stop and get out the winch and pull yourself through that documentation free zone. Um, then it takes a much longer time to get back to where you work. So one of the things that I found, you know, in studying API documentation is that, you know, a, a, a 20 or 30 second interruption is enough to cause a 20 minute reduction in productivity. So just because, oh, it only took five seconds to look it up, yeah, I'm going to take 20 minutes to get back to that spot where I was. And so, you know, again, frictionless paving that path to help customers get to their destination really has a lot of value. But to me, that's, you know, um, you know as a customer, the faster you can make me work, the better I think you're about that's your product. But, you know, we're here. We know that your API dots show how important your success is. So it's not just reference topics. I get that. It's the whole package, you know, the whole paving the road to success, you know, isn't just the beginning of the end. it's the whole thing. And so, your customers travel many paths. You need to know what those paths are. And, you know, as I remember as a technical writer, that's probably the hardest thing, is to know those paths. You know, uh, the, the closer you can get to the customers to know the paths, as the evangelists, I think, have the advantage there. Uh, as a technical writer, we were always, uh, in, the, in the jobs I had, one or two people removed from the customer. And so that put us in a bit of a disadvantage. But the more you know the problems your API solves, how your customers interact with your docs, how they write the, the code, the better you can uh, be where you need it. And so your customers are probably different. So you need to know this for yourself. And, you know, and, and one of the things that I found really uh, great about today's conference is that between the speakers, we've been given a lot of different ways to do that. Um, the, the one person that appeared in my heart was the uh, API usability of this talk. It's, it's like, oh, if only we had more of that. So one of the things that uh, in, in, in thinking about, you know, how can you learn more about your customer's journey, you know, if you're like in the sequestered technical communication job that I was. Um, I am thinking like, we, we have, you know, who, who's seen this? I did this documentation help. I mean, as documentation, we love to know that. But really, I thought, well, what if we, how would you approach that from the customer's view? Um, what if you asked, you know, you know, are you considering this API? Are you shopping? Are you starting a project? Are you finishing? How, how about finding out where they are in the process to know where your documentation is being used? I think, you know, if you can't get out and talk to them, that asking about their, um, you know, their process uh, will give you a lot of information and like, hey, they do care about life success. So, it's important to be where your customers will lead you, and it's important to know where that is. So, we've also heard about automation. Uh, you want to, because this, you know, reference topics can be a lot of work, especially good reference topics. Um, as some of our, our, our previous speakers have said. And so, it's important as technical writers to make the authoring tools work for you. Um, I've worked with a bunch of authoring systems. Some I had to work for them. Others work for me. But in order to reduce the customer's friction, you need to do what you can in your processes to reduce your friction. Uh, so work with your developers, the developers with the API. The, the, the best sites, I think the best documentation are important. There's a close relationship between the, the technical writers and the developers creating the, the documentation. But in all that automation, you know, and it's important not to abandon the human touch. Uh, in one of the one of my blog posts, uh, I, I, I commented that all the 
technical documentation, technical writing tech, uh, papers in academia from the computer science journals were all about how to automate everything. Uh, well, that's no. Unfortunately, they didn't cite any technical communication <coughs> references, so I don't know how they were going to measure the success of that, other than just you know, uh, how much group automation they were able to apply. But it's, it's important to remember, and I was encouraged to hear others say that, that developers are human too. And it's easy to forget that when you like automate things. Um, the other thing about reference topics is that they handle uh, a lot of use cases. Uh, the sort of quick look it up is one, but it's not the only one. Uh, some of the things that reference topics can describe are limitations, um, uh, you know, uh, cases where they apply, cases where they don't apply. Um, so there's a lot of, you need to know what those, uh, what the use cases are for the reference topics so that you can address them. Um, Everyone's heard of you know, less is more, we can do more with less and all that. Unfortunately, I don't think that's the case with reference topics. Uh, because if you knew the exact and only use case, you could write that. And you know, as you know your writers, you can uh, you, you, or you know your customers, you know where that is. But invariably, you don't know all the use cases, and so it's better to err on the side of more content to handle more use cases than not. Again, it gets back to you know, paving the road. How wide of a road do you need to pave? We've heard about metrics, and it's important to count what counts. And one of the questions I see you know, in, in like the Write the Docs Slack is, what do I need to look for? What do I count? And it's like, what account? What do you need to know? And, and I hate answering that way, because it sounds like I don't really care. So, you know, figure it out. But that's not the case. It's the, you know, we can't give you answers without knowing the questions that you want answered. And so it's important to know what's important to you. So for example, and we've heard some examples today. Uh, if you want to know, are people seeing your site? You know, count how many times people have opened the page. If you want to know who signed up for your site, count signups. Uh, if you want to know who's been successful with your API, count uh, you know, successful API utilization. But know what you want to count, know what's important, and then be sure to count that. And you know, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, monitor the, uh, and this is one thing that I, that I found out uh, over, over time after looking at a lot of statistics, is that monitoring individual page performance, pretty much across the board, is good to tell you if there's problems. Uh, in a few cases, it's good to tell you if they're successes. Um, you know, if some, if some pages are being viewed a lot, they kind of, why would anybody look at that? Uh, you know, maybe there's something that search is sending in the wrong way. Uh, on the other hand, it's like, um, you know, if nobody's looking at topics that you think should be found, that's important to know too. But knowing that lots of topics are being seen lots of times, um, I think you need to ask a more specific question. Uh, and, and being seen doesn't always mean being helpful, being useful, or being what they need. So there's other metrics to apply. With reference topics, uh, it's unfortunately common, from what I've seen, that they look at individual reference topics as they do individual landing pages and individual um, help uh, tutorials. And I don't think that's really appropriate because uh, in a lot of cases, I think it's better to consider a, a reference topic set as more of a multi-page topic, you know, one topic that's addressing a, a question across multiple pages as opposed to a tutorial topic that's answering a specific question of how do I do X. And so I think it's better to look at the use and the value of reference topics across the set, you know, the set that makes sense for your particular project to say, you know, okay, this set of topics is being used as opposed to just this page, because that's not really fair. Um, you're going to hit individual pages depending on how your content structure, when really that is telling you about the, the set as a whole. So to wrap this up, take this with you as you go home. Um, you can leave that suitcase. 
Uh, know your customers' journeys. We've heard lots of different ways to do that, and that's, a, that's amazing. Be where your developers need you, and be with there with what they need you. Automate as much as possible so you can just leverage your uh, efficiency. And track the analytics that matter, and know what those are. Uh, after all, you want to get the customers to your portal, but then you go through the portal to get them on the way to the destination. So, thank you, and uh, everyone have a safe trip home.